Hello, and uh, welcome to this week's View on Africa, uh, which is uh, about Mozambique's future um, and how natural gas could or could not change um, the human development and growth trajectory uh, of the country. <clears throat> I'm Alex Porter. I'm a research consultant um, with the African Futures and Innovation Unit here at the Institute of Security Studies. Um, I am also uh, the lead author of the report that we're going to be talking about, um, which is hasn't quite been launched yet, but we are uh, kind of offering a primer to this uh, particular report, which was commissioned by Irish Aid to help support their um, development strategy, uh, their five-year development strategy uh, from 2018 to 2022. Now, uh, what I'm going to present on um, is that I'm going to give you a brief overview of African Futures Innovation Unit, um, what we do here, and the tool that we use to forecast uh, things like natural gas, human development. Uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about some of the key takeaways um, from looking at the data historically and, and from what uh, we see in Mozambique right now. Uh, and then I'm going to go a little bit uh, more into uh, how ga natural gas growth and poverty interact and how that could um, change the future of Mozambique. Um, so I'll just jump right into African Futures Innovation. So the unit that this African Futures Innovation unit within the ISS is a little bit different. Um, we are a data-driven forecasting unit. Um, we are trying to look forward and provide policy-relevant analysis um, on human development and other aspects in Africa. Um, and what do I mean by forecasting? Um, what we do is we use a tool called the International Futures Tool, um, which is an extremely powerful tool. Um, it is hosted at the University of Denver, which is one of our partners, um, and they uh, maintain and update the tool. Um, now, this International Futures Tool, or IFS for short, uh, has over 3,000 3, data series in it, um, and it covers 186 countries. Um, so it's very powerful just in terms of looking at data uh, and figuring out what the historical trends in Mozambique could be. Um, what makes it a little bit different um, is that it integrates all of these data series across social, human, and natural sectors. For example, education, uh, economics, GDP growth, uh, agriculture. Um, and it tries to it, create, uh, it uses literature to uh, forecast re these relationships into the future. Um, the other part that makes it very unique is that it's a very long, it's a long-term looking model. So uh, we can, for this particular paper, we're looking over the next 23 years, up to 2040. Um, and so this tool, this forecasting tool, allows us to do kind of three different types of analysis, which is explore historical trends, which is uh, where we started with Mozambique. Um, understand how some of these systems like education, economics, uh, and agriculture all um, relate to each other and how they affect each other. And then also what we can do is we can shape through what we call scenario analysis. Um, we can shape uh, and frame what the future could be in Mozambique or in, in any other country. Um, so what I'm going to talk about today, uh, again, is more of a primer of the, of the project that we did. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the historical data that we've seen uh, and where Mozambique is now, and then some of the possibilities um, that we're seeing from our research um, into Mozambique and natural gas. Um, so if I were to you know, have one key takeaway from this talk, um, it would be that um, without significant investment in human development, such as education, health, agriculture, and things like that, um, Mozambique, it will be difficult for Mozambique to um, continue or in register inclusive growth. Uh, and by that, I mean uh, ensure that natural gas growth uh, or production, whenever it does come online, um, reaches the most poor and, and vulnerable in the country. Um, our kind of what we call a current path forecast, um, which is what we uh, think will happen based on current environment, environmental uh, conditions and policies, um, we see that uh, poverty in the absolute sense, which is, uh, we're talking about extreme poverty, which is the World Bank measure of uh, under $1.90 a day, um, the absolute number of people in poverty uh, is not forecast to change um, from uh, 2017 to 2040. 
Uh, right now it's around 19 million and we forecast it to be just under 19 million in 2040. So I think that's a very powerful message to start off with. Um, is that unless some things change and, and there's some concerted effort to manage gas revenues and, and register human development improvements, uh, Mozambique's trajectory um, may not uh, be as rosy as it seems with, with natural gas. Um, so I'm going to start with a little bit about uh, where Mozambique's come from. Um, and if we look at um, some of the data within the model, um, we see that Mozambique is, is kind of chronically underdeveloped. Um, it comes from a very low base. Um, and even though it has registered over the past 20 years 7% um, economic growth, um, it has increased life expectancy by uh, over 10 years. Um, primary school enrollment has increased by 60%. Um, we still see that it lags behind um, both its neighbors and other uh, African peers. And what I mean by that is um, we're comparing Mozambique to other uh, low-income economies and countries. And so um, across a number of levels of human development, um, it lags significantly behind its peers. Um, just as an example, um, the Human Development Index, which is an, a measure of uh, education levels, uh, health, uh, via life expectancy, and income levels, um, Mozambique is currently 183 out of 186 countries. Um, lower than countries with significant internal strife, such as South Sudan and Democratic Republic of Congo. Um, it also has the third lowest educational attainment in the world. Um, and a, under a quarter of the population has act access to electricity um, or improved or clean sanitation facilities. Now lastly, while um, Mozambique has uh, reduced extreme poverty, again, uh, as measured by uh, people living under $1.90 a day uh, in U.S. dollars. Um, it has reduced it from 85% of the population to 65% of the population since around 1995. But um, over that same time, the number of people who are in extreme poverty has increased by 5 million. And that may seem a bit counterintuitive at first, um, but this brings us to kind of our next uh, major point is that Mozambique has experienced and is likely to experience uh, continued uh, population growth, significant population growth, um, which means that um, extending services like water and sanitation infrastructure, electricity, uh, ensuring that the poorest um, are able to uh, make money and improve their lives becomes increasingly difficult um, the more people that you do have. Um, as of right now, the country has about 29 million people, um, and that population has about doubled over the past 20 years, um, uh, since 1995. And we expect that kind of population growth to continue. Um, it's not quite going to double uh, over the next 20, 23 years, but we expect that Mozambique will add an additional 24 million um, people by 2040, which will give it a total of, of 53 million people. Now that's a bit about um, kind of the past and where Mozambique is. Um, now I'm going to try and look a little bit into the future here and talk about more about uh, what could happen. Um, the question really here is, will Mozambique be able to improve um, all these kind of human development indicators that I just went over in terms of education and health in the midst of this population growth? Um, now, optimism around natural gas, which is um, kind of the, the title of this, of this uh, talk, um, there's a lot of different kind of ways that, that natural gas could go. Um, now, the optimism revolves around natural gas deposits in the north, um, uh, and these deposits are enormous. Um, they are greater than the entire natural gas reserves of Nigeria, not oil, but natural gas. Um, and is estimated at peak production, um, Mozambique could be the third largest liquid natural gas exporter in the world. Um, now that's a huge amount of gas and a huge amount of uh, possible growth and income and exports for the country. Um, but the question is, will this gas production um, and growth translate to um, kind of those human development indicators and that, under, that chronic underdevelopment that I was just talking about earlier? Um, now, past experiences uh, with low-income countries uh, having gas or oil 
uh, come online rapidly has shown us uh, in, in low-income countries um, has shown us that natural gas extraction doesn't necessarily translate. Um, that extra money can uh, cause uh, significant uh, uh, corruption and rent-seeking problems. Um, now, leading up to this, um, the, the large natural gas uh, deposits in the north are not yet, have not yet started production or construction. Um, in Mozambique, there have been uh, delays in final investment decisions. Um, some of this is just due to normal negotiations. Some of this is due to the most recent debt crisis, um, which uh, around a billion or two, about $2 billion um, was found to be kind of secretly taken out. Um, now, so, which means that natural gas production has already been delayed significantly. Um, originally, natural gas was in those northern fields, um, was supposed to start in 2020. Um, it was then pushed back to about 2021. Um, and that timeline is still uh, a bit uncertain. Um, after going to Mozambique, uh, which me and the team at, at African Futures Innovation did to consult with natural gas experts and uh, people around around this, um, we um, included a forecast of natural gas production in this upcoming paper um, because it is so important and so integral to the future of Mozambique. Um, after consultation, uh, we, we, we expect that production will start in the mid-2020s. Uh, we I think we have around 2024 and we'll uh, accelerate through the, the, early, mid, mid, the early to mid-2030s. Um, now, whether or not that timeline comes online specifically or not, um, it's less the question. The bigger question is whether that impressive growth, which we forecast that that kind of energy production over that length of time, will Mozambique will average about 10% growth um, over the uh, energy production period, which is the mid-2020s to, to 2030s. The question is whether that growth um, and that energy production and that shift to an energy intensive economy will translate to the most poor and vulnerable and will uh, improve education outcomes, will improve life expectancy. Um, now, as I said before, if the, the one thing to take away is that um, along kind of our expected path um, of Mozambique, we, we don't expect that the absolute number of those in extreme poverty is going to change much. Um, now, in this, this paper that we've written, we've also uh, run scenarios to frame the uncertainty around both natural gas, human development, um, and all of these things. <clears throat> and a lot of this, in the end, will hinge on uh, whether the government is able to uh, transparently manage natural gas revenues and reinvest it back into the country. Um, I don't think that'll, that'll come to us as a surprise to a lot of people. Um, but given the recent kind of the, the, the debt crisis, um, there was a significant withdrawal of uh, multilateral and bilateral aid, um, uh, and negotiations are ongoing in that. Now, uh, Mozambique is historically fairly dependent on, on general budget support, both in terms of actual funds and in terms of capacity. And so if we kind of combine those factors um, along with um, Kind of the past 20 years of trends in both uh, in government effectiveness and the ability of the government to extend services to a, to a, to a growing population, um, the expected trajectory again is is not is not it shows that shows us that um, Mozambique will struggle to uh, provide an increasing amount of basic infrastructure, basic services to its growing population. Um, even with uh, natural gas production. Now, we also, um, kind of at the end of this, uh, this larger paper that, I, that I've been speaking about that um, I'll tell you kind of at the end when it's going to be launched and when you can actually read that, um, we do these kind of broader framing scenarios or interventions where we, we say, what, what's a really great scenario for Mozambique by 2040 and what's, what, what could happen if things kind of go wrong? And so in... Um, this kind of all good scenario where Mozambique's able to improve human development, where governance takes these natural gas revenues and reinvests them into the country. Um, 
we see a in by 2040 a four million less people in extreme poverty, um, and that's an ex that's an extreme amount. Um, it's a lot of people, um, and so uh, while some of the statistics I gave you uh, or I cited and the p picture I'm painting was was you could say dire, um, there's a real opportunity here for Mozambique to take advantage of these natural gas revenues and reinvest them into the country, given how big um, of, uh, of, of a boost to growth and development this really could be. And now on the flip side, um, if uh, natural gas doesn't come out in the way uh, that the IMF or we are forecasting, or there's less, or the market uh, crashes, um, if governance kind of uh, isn't able to manage the revenues uh, as well, uh, and uh, kind of progress stalls across education, health, and all of these different sectors, um, we could see almost 14 million more people in extreme poverty. Now, obviously, those are kind of two extremes, but um, and this to kind of help to frame uh, the range of possibilities that Mozambique could see. Um, and also, again, I, I've just focused on extreme poverty here, but there's a number of different things you could look at. Um, and I hope that. Uh, as we release the paper, uh, you'll re read through it and, and give us some feedback on that.